Warren Ellsmore is an artist in Lego bricks and a lifelong fan of Lego based in Edinburgh. Warren left a successful IT career in 2012 to fulfill a dream and now works full time as an internationally recognized brick artist. Welcome Warren. Now you are a crazy talented builder in the Lego world. Are you a Lego certified professional yet? I'm not a Lego certified professional. Um for a couple of reasons, but it's it's actually quite restrictive what you can do if you're in the program, um, especially in Europe, because there's so many of them already. And so is it a goal to become certified or are you happy doing what you're doing? I would have to drop most of our current business if we did it. So they'd be starting from scratch again, which is not so great. Who would win in a build-up, you or Ryan McDonald? I don't know if Ryan's the same as me, is that the bigger the business gets, the more stuff you end up doing and actually the less building you end up doing. Yeah. So. Um, for the last couple of years, I've, you know, we spend more time managing staff and doing budgets and boring stuff like that than actually building. You're known as a bit of an all-rounder in the show world. So what outside of building can't you do? I could do a lot of DIY. I've done, spent the last 18 months doing an awful lot of DIY. <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything we can't do. We've had, we've been asked to do some really stupid things that are just, I mean, we got asked to build a London double-decker bus full size in a weekend. No, so, in a week no, no, yeah, in a weekend, <laughs> so we can't do that. <laughs> so we do a thing quite often, we do what we call a big build. So I'll design a model just out of two by four or two by two bricks. Um, and then we'll get the public to make big versions of the two by two, two by four bricks. So kind of six scale. Um, and the public build those, which means we can make something big really quickly just by copying our existing design and scaling it up. You do hold an epic Guinness World Record. What's it for? So we've got two Guinness World Records. Uh, the first one was we got in 2012 for the largest Lego picture, uh, which has been beaten so many times since then, but we did 10 meters by 15. So that was about, uh, about two thirds of a million elements. Oh my God. Um, and then, then in 2016, we got the Guinness World Record for the world's largest Lego ship. It was really huge. Yeah, we did it as one of these uh, big builds but we, with a company called DFDS, which is a ferry company in Europe. Um, and they sent bricks to 7,000 star across Europe. And they built big bricks, sent them back to us. And then we made a 14 meter long, over two ton Lego ship, which basically filled the back of an 18 wheeler. Oh my gosh. The logistics for that must have been insane. So the top, the front bits of it, you can stand up in it. It's big enough for that. It's, you know, you can put your arm, both your arms out and just about touch the sides. Right down the far end, it got really small. So there was kind of crawl space at the back underneath the loading decks and stuff like that. The most crazy thing about that build, actually, um, was I got a phone call from the, from DFDS who had it in Copenhagen. and said, we're going to loan it to the National Maritime Museum of Denmark. I went, that's cool. Um, and it's in an old, it's in a converted dry dock. So we're going to crane the model into the dry dock. So I, I went over there because like, there are bits of this model I need to strengthen. It will not survive if I don't strengthen bits of this model. So I went over there to go and see it. And like, you know, that, that ship is not glued because of the way we built it, it couldn't be glued. Okay. Um, so whenever you move a mock, it kind of creaks and you can hear the bricks move. Yeah. The guys with the crane lifted like a million brick unglued model into a dry dock and it was silent as a pin. All of us were just standing there going, this is going to go horribly wrong. <laughs> I'm nervous hearing this story. Yeah. I know it was fine. <laughs> we had to hire a warehouse because the, we had to build it and the truck wouldn't fit inside our studio. Yeah. Um, they're, I mean, they're a shipping company, so they could ship all the bricks around quite easily. Yeah. But we'd get, you know, one day a lorry would turn up with one box on the back of it for us, and then a car would turn up, and then a truck. And we had all sorts of bricks coming in over the period of about, about two weeks. Um, and then we had to get a steel framework made for that, which we had to fit inside the back of the trailer. Yeah. Um, and then it was welded onto the trailer so it didn't move around. Um, it took about six months worth of planning, but we did the build in about 19 days. Wow. wow. So, so it had to be ready for their birthday party and we gave them as long as we could. Uh, but I mean, to give you an idea, so the lifeboats on the side of the of the ship were just under a meter long, just the lifeboats themselves. You probably could have survived in them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did it pass the float test? <laughs> well. To get it, so if you get, a, if you want to have a Guinness World Record, you have to have it officially measured by somebody, you know, some professional person. 
So they hired a ship's architect for the day to come along with the Guinness World Record guy and measure the ship. I was like, I can tell you exactly how long it is because I know how many studs it is. So I you know, can tell you exactly how long it is. But they measured it with the ship's architect. He told us exactly how it would sink. <laughs> 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 well, uh, many AFOLs and LEGO fans might recognise your name on some of their favourite LEGO books. Your first book title, Brick City, has been translated into 21 languages. What's it like seeing your uh, book on the shelves, in the shops? Yeah, it, it is the coolest thing ever to go into a bookshop and see, especially your first book, on the shelf with your name on it. Um, and I have been guilty of going into bookshops and asking if they had a copy of it just to see it. <laughs> <laughs> do, you do, do you do the like signing, um, you know, you ask me if you can sign a few, tell them who you are and, and leave? Yeah, well, I've done those. I mean, they're, they're pre-arranged, but I've done a bunch of signings where you sit there at a desk and just write your name. Yeah. And I'm talking about free range surprise ones at yeah. airports and whatnot. No, I think that would probably be vandalism. All right. <laughs> what advice do you have for master builders who would want to turn their art into their careers? The main thing you, the, I mean, any artist needs is a portfolio. So you need, you know, images uh, or video or whatever of what you've done um, of all different shapes and sizes as well. Because I mean, I, I, I have a preference as what I like to build, but working, working with somebody else, I have to build whatever they want. So. You're talking in you know different scales, different themes, different sizes, um, and lots of it is not stuff that you would build yourself, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we got a commission to build a roundabout on the street, you know, just a model of a roundabout. Mm -hmm. I'd never build that myself, but that's what the customer wanted, and had a really good reason for doing it. So yeah. the more stuff you can put into a portfolio, um, it's easier to kind of show to people, hey, this is what I do. Would you like to do some of it, or? If you wanted to go work for Lego or some or somebody else, then that's what they're going to be looking for. Do you have a favourite commission build from the last eight years? Um, we've done a couple of museums, which have been really so we've done like mini fixed scale museums, but properly to scale. Um, so then we did the National Museum of Scotland here, and that's about three and a half metres long as a cutaway model. So you've got the front of the museum on, on one side, and then the whole of the inside galleries on the other. We built a container ship for Hamburg Sud. Um, and they had first of all, first off, they want it was actually a gift from Maersk to Hamburg Sud. Um, so we built this 1.5 meter long container ship and delivered it to their offices, and they had a big reveal. That was great. And then they commissioned us to be, build little baby versions of it on a trade show. <laughs> so we built them literally about this size, tiny little container ship, smaller than the Maersk ship you can buy. Um, and we sat there on their trade store built. Um, trade show, building one every day and, and putting it together and then they rattled it at the end. Oh, and that was that was really good fun. You have worked with some really interesting clients in some fascinating places. What is the craziest place that a client has taken you to for your Lego building? I do get to go to various places. Um, quite a lot of them seem to be high. So I've been, if anybody remembers back to the London 2012 Olympics, there's a structure called the Orbit. So I've been right to the very top of that on the roof overlooking the whole Olympic Park. Which cool. Cool. Yeah, and I did the models of the fourth bridge, which is the road suspension bridge here in Edinburgh. Um, we did a site visit for that, so they took me out to the bridge, went right to the very top, which is about 200 meters above sea level. Yeah, and looked out and then down and underneath the road deck. So I you, you can kind of pop your head up in between lanes of traffic on that on that bridge. I'm, I'm getting a bit of a theme with logistics and infrastructure and architecture. Is this why you got into Lego in the first place? Not really. I mean, I think it's things I like, and I think it's things that those, those types of customers like having models of things. Yeah. So any, you go to any shipping company's office and they have thousands of models of their ships. It's, it's kind of what they do. So building a Lego model of it is just a, an extension of that. Whenever I do anything like that, the engineering is almost exactly the same as the real thing. Mm. So whenever I'm at the end and go, you know, that junction there of seven bits of steelwork coming together was really hard to build in Lego. And they go, yeah, it was really hard to design in real steel as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, Warren, Brickvention's online this year and we're getting visitors to comment their favorite Brickvention memories from, from over the years on our socials. You've been to Brickvention, what's your favorite memory? You know, the overriding memory of a lot of it was heat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Every year. <laughs> yeah, um, it was, I think it was just below zero here in Edinburgh. And when I landed in Melbourne, it was like 41. <laughs> yeah, <Sounds about> right. <laughs> that's, that's normal for us. Yeah. Yeah. We call that Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> it was, 
it was really really good fun actually uh, I really really enjoyed it although you made me judge models which is always a horrible thing to have yeah. to do you know to say that's better than that um, but no I think the thing I love was the variety there's such a variety of, of models and of affolds and lots of teenagers as well getting involved um, so and, and it was huge I mean I think I got around to see absolutely everything but you can never tell do you think you'll ever retire from Lego building um no probably not I mean I might retire from actually having to run a business and do it paid but um, I'll always be an apple I'm sure uh well Warren thank you so much for joining us at Brickvention 2021 online thank you it's been a blast Keep an eye on this playlist, subscribe and set reminders so you don't miss a thing for Brickvention Online.